I'm Kevin Mamajek, and you're watching Niagara Pro Tips. All right, in the age of COVID, I have I've actually changed my shirt. So being in the basement and I record these, you know, every couple of weeks, um, I like to wear the same shirt. So <laughs> my colleagues have said, hey, you got to go change your shirt. So I changed my shirt, got my hair cut, had to wear the mask. So I didn't want to do the bowl thing. So we're all ready to go here. So today I'm going to talk about how to detect comfort and evaluate the CO2 level based upon the ASHRAE um, standard that they've placed out there. So what I'm going to do is kind of walk you through this cooking, right? So it's kind of like a cooking show where I have um, I have the ingredients and then I have the finished product. So I'll, I'll walk you through how I got all the components here because this is a brand new station. So there's an example station out there on the Tritium Talk page that has this example where you can go and do the same thing. So the first thing I had to do is in the examples, I had to copy the actual ASHRAE CO2 algorithm out and paste it into this station. And then the second thing was there's an example uh, app that has a UI. And so since I have icons, <laughs> um, that one little icon kind of uh, can throw you for a loop. So what I did is I created a template. That way everything is all bundled up and all the references are correct. So once I created a, a, a reference of that, uh, I went in and deployed that as a template just so I didn't have to do that work. So that's my um, kind of the pre-baked outcome. And then I'll walk you through how I created it. So let's take a look at the service or at the algorithm, uh, actual algorithm. So if we look at this, um, it's, you know, I, I've got a small recording here, but it's it's kind of a, it's not a, it's a, it's not a sophisticated algorithm. It's just I had to do some blocks to kind of come up with what I wanted out of this. And so part of when you create an algorithm, you have to think about this result, whether you want true or false, uh, you want a number. Um, I was trying to get a string out of there and that kind of worked. But what I wanted was an enumeration um, on the back end so that the PX page can change color based on what it is in that enumeration. So I'll show you how I kind of trick that out. So let's me zoom back in here. All right. So first thing I do is, you know, again, in the analytic palette, um, you know, I if you were creating this from scratch, which you could if you wanted to follow along, you can drop an algorithm in and then lay out these blocks yourselves, which I highly recommend doing this. Um, actually helps understand uh, the algorithms and the analytics. So. Here I'm, I'm showing you the already one because this could, you know, take a long time to wire it out. So here I'm going to just drop a data source, which is looking for the CO2 tag. So I have a haystack CO2 tag and a haystack sensor tag applied to this point that I want to evaluate. So it has to have both of those tags in order for this to work. So that's the first thing I did. Then the second thing, you know, I, I probably did this algorithm a couple times. Um, I did it the long way, which was pretty funny because uh, as I try to do these and, and teach them, <laughs> I realize I can do them much better. So I know there's many ways of doing this, but I did it with this, you know, greater than, and then I found a um, range switch. So it will behoove you to go through and look at <laughs> what's available so you don't duplicate uh, the effort. So there was a range switch, which was pretty nice. So all I had to do is plumb in uh, the high range. So if you look at this, all of these ranges, I'm, a, I'm doing a, a range on normal, a range on poor, and a range on high, and a range on critical. And those are the four uh, designators that the ASHRAE uh, chart gave us. So I have constants of high, so zero to a thousand, low and high, get plumbed into the first range. The second one is um, 1,001 to 2,000, which was the poor range. Then I have a 2,001 to 4,000, which is a, a high range. And then I have 4,001 to 200,000. I think they stop at five. I added two because I think somebody mentioned that it might be death. I, I added in. Maybe I should do another range, but don't quote me on that. So four ranges have to be evaluated. And then once those four ranges are evaluated, I do some um, um, simple um, switches to allow me to know which one I want set, right? And so if you look at the range, 
all the range is going to do is uh, true false one or zeros i plumb in a one or zero just to say consistent so the ranges are true false once i get there um, i start to do a another switch that says all right if it is true i need it to pass a value so if it is normal i need it to send one okay if it is poor i need it to send the numeric two right and so you'll see a two here being plumbed in if it's true if it is true for the high i need to send it a value of three if it is true on four or on the the last one which is critical i need to send it to four so those those map to what my enumeration will be on the other side and then what i do is i have to somehow get them all into one value so i add them all up so if if the, you you will never have a range uh, two ranges come up true at the same time, right? If you look at the way I did the numbers. So when I add all these up, it's really going to be if it's normal, it's going to add a one and a zero. If it's down here, it's going to add a zero and then a two, right? Depending on if they're true or not. So I just add those all up. And then I tried this value map um, block, which allows me to kind of define um, normal, high, critical, and you'll see uh, I'll use that in another place. And then I just plumb it to the result. Okay, so that the algorithm's done. We're ready to go. So now what I'll do is, again, I applied a template down here. So I just took the um, template, dropped it into apps. The only thing I had to do is we look at the template. Um, these wouldn't render because uh, in the example station, my algorithm for CO2 was inside a comfort folder up in the algorithms. So I just had to chop that out and then we were all set. And again, I did that for that lonely icon up there. So if we look at the wire sheet now, um, all I had to do was put in an analytic proxy point. So if you go again to the analytics palette, down here under the points, I can drag out an enumerated writable. So I did that for the main algorithm. So if we look at that, I left the default, which is relative to where it's at. So the, the point I'm going after is right here. It's right on the same wire sheet. So really I didn't have to go point to anything. I just say, look at that same uh, level, execute the algorithm, and then um, this was actually the default polar from the other station. So I just had to select it and I chose the only polar available, which was default. And then I said, save. So now that's ready to go. Now the default polar you have to remember is uh, five minutes, right? So if I go over there and look, it's, it's set at um, five minutes. So um, just keep that in mind that when you first fire this station up and you refresh the cache, you won't have any values until that polar runs. So what I'm going to do is I could actually go and right click and then say action pull and that kicks the kicks the engine there to go do the actual pull and then I could do the same for these two since they're both together they're actually you know this one is just showing you the value down here that it's coming through and this is showing you the um, actual string that I set up for the facets right so if you come down here and you look at um, this, I have a series of facets that actually give me um, what I want to have, right? So I have normal high, uh, or normal poor high and critical based on those uh, numbers that I pass through, okay? And again, I did it this way so that I could actually trap that. Instead of doing a number, I didn't want to trap, um, you know, from one, from zero to one is this, right? So this just allows me to do the um, animation a, a little easier in the PX page, okay? So this is tagged. This is my actual um, thing. It has to be in parts per million. I didn't put an actual facet to say parts per million. It just, it, I'm using parts per million. So my ranges are the zero to a thousand. I had to tag it. So you'll see CO2 and sensor. I, you know, I'm breaking my, my own rule no pun intended, but you should use tag rules. You shouldn't manually tag your um, points. So I should have a rule that's looking for room suyo too. The reason why I'm doing this is if you pull this out, I need to make sure you understand that this is the tags that have to be applied to that point. So use a rule, don't do manual tags as I do here. Um, and I'm also uh, alerting you to, if it doesn't have the A colon A tag, <laughs> um, 
you don't have auto tagging turned on and it won't execute. So that's just a little troubleshooting thing. Okay. So with that, then I'm ready to go with the PX page. And you'll see that again, this is the UI. This is just allowing me to uh, change the values. I can go up here and since I don't want to wait for the um, uh, polar to go every five minutes, I'm just going to kind of kickstart them there for this um, recording. And you can see that they change. So on the point on the wire sheet here, right next to it is evaluating that 1500 and it says it's poor. So I can copy this and paste it anywhere in the station. It will execute and look right next to itself what that CO2 level is and report back on whether it's high, normal, poor, right? So I don't have to memorize those ranges. And so now once this is all done with that equation in there, again, cut, copy and paste and you're off to the races and you don't have to worry about setting those facets. You don't have to worry about um, coming up with what that range is. If ASHRAE would ever change that range, I would just change it in my actual equation um, or algorithm up there. This again is just visualizing what's happening inside the algorithm. You don't have to have any of that stuff. You just need this, right? And so again, we can make it critical. Go and tell it to execute the polar down here. And again, why I had to do it in two places is just I have that second proxy point. And so if I manually pull it, I have to tell both to go. If it passes through the five minute mark, they both execute at the same time and you're all set. So there is a way of looking at CO2, evaluating it with the ASHRAE standard to tell me whether it is a normal high, a poor, normal poor high or critical. And drop that into your station and you're up and running with that evaluation of comfort.